A super yacht is a statement of success. Every single one is different, a translation of an owner's dream into reality. Over the last 20 years, one man and his team have been handpicked to design 55 of these spectacular yachts. And we're about to spend time with him and some of those who chose him and find out why. We are about to head into the exclusive world of the multi-million euro super yacht with a man who has earned an extraordinary design reputation, Ed Dubois. But first, we're heading offshore on a sailing classic. This year's entry of 314 yachts was a record for the Rolex Fastnet race. And there was an air of added anticipation as weather forecasters were predicting record-setting conditions. The 100-foot Rambler, one of the favorites to make history. It's very weather dependent, but it looks like we have a really uh, good forecast. So you never really know, but uh, we've got a fast boat and uh, the conditions look really good for us. Conditions for the start of this 608 mile iconic race did not disappoint. Well, they're just about to put the main up and power up the machine. We're just 10 minutes from their start, and over 300 boats have already started and are making their way out the Solent. And for the giants that start last, well, they've got to weave their way throughout the fleet before they're in open water and heading towards the Fastnet Rock. A day and a half into the race, and just after Rambler rounded the Fastnet Rock, there was catastrophic failure. The keel sheared off, upside down in seconds, a life-threatening scenario. But all 21 crew were rescued. The boat tipped over pretty quickly. We had a lot of people climbing out from inside, so it was pretty frantic to uh, get everyone out of the boat. And we're just uh, so so lucky that we got the five crew that went in the water. And uh, I mean, it was just uh, pretty scary. A haunting reminder that ocean racing can be a dangerous game even for a crew with some of the most experienced professionals in the world. Experience that here may not have won a race, but helped save lives. Race records were broken, for the multi-hulls Bank Populaire smashed the existing multi-hull record with a time of 32 hours and 48 minutes. And in the monohulls where Volvo opened 70 Abu Dhabi also broke the existing record by one hour, 39 minutes. The definition of a super yacht, well, it's a bit vague, but it's generally agreed to be yachts over 30 meters long. There are 14 super yachts here in Porto Cervo, Sardinia, worth around 150 million euros. I'm here as there is something really intriguing about this lineup, because whilst every boat here is unique, they've all been designed by one man and his team. And they all started their lives on this drawing board, 700 miles away in southern England. This is where designer Ed Dubois leads his team and turns concepts and pencil drawings into tangible floating works of art and feats of engineering. Where Dubois fulfills a boyhood dream. Your passion for what you do is, I mean, it's so evident. Have you always had that? Yes, I was completely um, mesmerized by boats from an early age, from a very early age, from as long as I can remember. You know, and uh, building model boats from the age of five and six years old. Um, I just thought they were the most wonderful looking things. I was obsessed. You're a sailing anorak, eh? <laughs> I was, yeah, I was a, a total sailing anorak. Was designing super yachts, you know, your ultimate goal? No, don't forget super yachts didn't exist when I was a little boy and didn't really exist until I was into my 30s. So my dream was designing racing yachts, not super yachts, when I was smaller. 
Australian multimillionaire Neville Crichton has flown halfway around the world to meet Dubois today. How are you? The pair go back a long way, and today the Australian is here to talk detail on his eighth Dubois designed super yacht. When on land live, we had steps there, and we just decided you didn't need the stairs, so we just left it open to give a feeling of space when you were in the bridge. So, do you want the door here? Do you, have, do you need the door? And this would be your walkway, this would be the corridor down to your yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the glass side window. Dubai's business partner for the last 24 years is Malcolm McKeon. Your old boat, you came up here, the yeah, escape route sure. out to the side, you needed the door. But don't think cosmetically, do we need No. My name's on the door or on the letterhead, and so people expect to see me, and I'm usually the first point, point of contact with a, with a new client. But we try to, early on, involve Malcolm in, in design meetings. He has his own ideas about styling as well, but they're very similar to my own, otherwise it wouldn't work. So I think that's key. Our aesthetic sense almost entirely coincides. You couldn't sleep Everyone anymore. around this table is about to leave the UK. Tomorrow is the start of an event open to everyone, as long as you bring a Dubois-designed super yacht with you. The Dubois Cup was inspired by the owners. I was quite reluctant. I thought it might seem rather pretentious almost of a designer to putting on a regatta, to put on a regatta. But they said, well, no, nah, I think it's a great idea. And anyway, if you don't want to do it, we will. It must have been quite daunting at first for you, but has the concept worked? It's a, like a wonderful working boat show. You know, boat shows are traditionally boats in a, in a hall uh, in the dry um, and they're not in their natural environment. When they're sailing, racing, particularly large boats, they're in their natural environment and it's very easy to demonstrate what you try to achieve with that particular design. Okay, we'll see you, um, see you in Sardinia. Yeah. Cheers. So Ed Dubois Bye. leaves his drawing board and is now the man in charge of an event which carries his name and where expectations are high. Owners have flown in for the third edition of the Dubai Cup to join their super yachts, delivered to Porto Cervo by their professional crew. Standards here, well, let's say they have to be much more than five star. The responsibility for delivering, that's down to Ed Dubois. He's up early to meet his team. At 5.15, you've got an interview. Who with? With Super Yacht Media. And okay. at six o'clock is the opening, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I better think what I'm going to say there too. Yes. I've got a copy of your speech downstairs. As Ed dots the I's and crosses the T's on his opening speech, the owners are out on the water, enjoying what he is more used to working on, his designs. And 14 of the 55 super yachts that he has shaped turn the waters of Porto Cervo into a design showcase. As professional crews put their super yachts to sleep, owners and their guests arrive at the opening party at the exclusive Yacht Club Costa Smeralda. Here, designer and event host Ed Dubois is front of house. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our regatta. Hi there, nice to see you, thanks for coming. Rupert and Sophie Berger. Sophie. Oh, hello. Hi there, hi there, hi there, thanks for coming. All our clients are different just like everybody in the world's different. I could say rather tritely, perhaps, they all have to be quite wealthy. Giovanni. Yes, how are you? Oh. Thank you so much for coming. Hello, nice to see you again. And generally, quite wealthy people are pretty smart to have made enough money to be able to afford uh, a very expensive yacht. What's so evident here is the rapport that Ed appears to have with everyone. He knows these people well, and his charm and enthusiasm for what he does well, that's infectious. Thank you so much for coming. It's lovely. <laughs> hope we'll to have a nice weather tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so. I I'm like to think I can relate to them all in one way or another uh, well. And, and I enjoy meeting them. I, I, I really do find a big part of the satisfaction I get out of the job of being a yacht designer is being able to relate with the client and understand what their priorities are. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice to see all the boats here. Yeah, we've got uh, 14 boats actually. You've got to establish that trust straight away, otherwise they're not going to commit 15, 20, 30, 50 million somethings to your hand.
I've come to Porto Cervo, Sardinia, to the third Dubois Cup, an exclusive event for owners of super yachts designed by Ed Dubois, who's built up an international reputation over the past 30 years. His life is about design, but it's also all about people. It's a long time, isn't it, with one client? You must develop an you know, incredible relationship. Yes, you do. I wouldn't flatter myself to say that they become good friends, but you develop a good relationship and uh, some of them definitely do become friends. And, and I think it's true to say that most of the time, I think currently, most of our uh, clients are repeat clients. 45 metre Timonier was one of the early super yachts he designed. For a man with racing yachts in his blood, the brief from the American clients must have required a very different mindset. I don't think of her as a super yacht. What we wanted was something comfortable that we would feel very at home in and that would go fairly fast. And we got exactly what we wanted. As you look around, you see we, we have a look very similar to a summer cottage. Tell me about designing this boat with Ed. It was very nice to work with him. Uh, he's uh, receptive to your ideas, but he really has many of his own. It was different because they knew exactly what they wanted. They wanted a traditional looking boat, not a modern streamlined Dubois design. And um, they've loved it. And they've been all around the world twice on, on that boat. I look at the great, great deal of fondness because they, they were wonderful clients, they've had a fantastic time, it's a total success as far as they're concerned, and therefore it's a success as far as we're concerned. Mrs Gosnell is now alone, but Tim and gave her and her late husband many years of pleasure together. The minute he came on this boat, he relaxed, he, uh, he, he enjoyed life more, and I think I absorbed a lot of that from him. I think my husband lived longer because we had this boat. Tim and Ear hold so many precious memories. Mrs. Gosnell still spends a lot of time on board with her crew and skipper, part of the fabric of her life, her family on the ocean. So here's what we've got. We've got uh, a compressed practice day. We didn't get much done yesterday because we had to put the boat together. Tim Anir is raced at Super Yacht Regattas, but the atmosphere on board is calm, courteous and gentle. For the next two days of racing, we're going to try to establish a routine on how do we get the spinnaker up, how do we get it down. Somebody calling? It must be nice to see the boat sort of lit up as well, you know, all the yes. sails up. And... I haven't seen the spinnaker up in probably hmm, two and a half years. Basically, we're a bit of a, a wolf in sheep's clothing because you know, everybody looks at us and they think, oh, it's a motor sailor. But we've won the super yacht regatta three times, which is more than any other boat uh, in existence. So, you know, we, we're happy. And Mrs. G is very happy. That's the main thing. And that last comment says it all. A super yacht is whatever an owner wants it to be. And that is something that Ed Dubois is obviously brilliant at identifying. Many owners do not take the helm of their super yachts, but that does not mean they do not relish the adrenaline rush of sailing them, seeing these extraordinary boats thrive when they are powered up. Because when it's windy, racing a super yacht is an unforgettable experience. This is Salperton, owned by Barry Houghton. When two boats, each weighing over 200 tonnes, pass within metres, it's quite a moment, especially if you're the owner. Yeah. <laughs> it's the heart. Now the adrenaline's going. <laughs> it's like we're a runaway train. We can't slow down. We've got all these sails up. We've got to get the spinnaker down. And to the left of us, it's just rocks and islands. So. This is a different world to Tim and Ear. But this was an owner with very different requirements when he commissioned his third Dubois design. He wanted performance. We tried to make, make the boat as low as possible, but still be comfortable, still have lots of visibility. One of the things which we really try hard about is to try and get the boat to look as sleek as possible, but still have great visibility when you're inside and offer you protection, but still allow you a view of the horizon. It's not just naval architecture, making the boat sail properly. It's the architecture to make the boat really lovely to live on. Um, and so Salperton, I think, is a good example of that. 
Barry Safferton's a, a beautiful yacht, but what really struck me about her is that there's a lot of you in her. I mean, she's very personal. Yeah, yeah. Well, myself and the crew, and the crew have been with me a long time, so we all contribute. And I think when you've spent 16 weeks a year on a boat for many, many years, you're quite clear what works. And uh, I enjoy the build process almost as much as I enjoy the sailing. And the enjoyment is probably enhanced as a multi-million pound super yacht appears to be a sound investment. We have many clients who've made money on the boats. In fact, all the boats bar one that we built in New Zealand and the 35 of them over 100 foot long, every single one of them has sold for more than they cost even when they're four and five years old. This is the Dubois Cup in Porta Cervo, Sardinia, an exclusive regatta held for the owners of super yachts designed by Ed Dubois. Over the years, Ed has built up close working relationships and friendships with his customers. But it's not just those he has designed for that he has a strong bond with. Michael Ryan is the third owner of Tanaz, and the first I've met who takes the helm. I wouldn't have bought a boat that I wasn't prepared to, to drive and, and park and sail and make decisions on it. I, I don't know why you would. Pretty much been around boats my whole life, and so coming to this boat, amazed that a boat this large um, steers as well as she does, um, trims up as nicely as she does, and has as much feel. Why at Dubois? Very quickly, as he started looking around, you know, over 100, 120, 130 feet, Really, Dubois was the sort of benchmark for, for big boats that sail. They're sort of big boats for sailors. Plus, they're beautiful. I think Ed builds a timeless boat. What does she mean to you and your family? I think it's probably the place where, you know, a lot of people have like a cottage or a family home where they come together. For us, this is really the place where we've been and enjoy being a family together. A super yacht is a means to an end. It's all about how they're used, the memories that they can deliver. Michael and his family have sailed around the world. How do you beat the memory of sitting out, sailing out of the sky on the way into Alexandria with your daughter beside you? Oh, that's pretty cool. That is very cool. We ready to bring the jib out? We got a button pusher? Call if they, you guys call if you want to laugh. Roger that. Can you use the spade a bit? Just get the yeah. All right, I'm coming across, excuse me. He's really loving it and it's fantastic to see. He's not only cruising the boat with his family, but look how competitive he is. It's brilliant. What we have to do, Ed, proud. The more time you spend around the owners of these super yachts, the more the boats come alive. I suppose I've always thought of a super yacht as a status symbol, but that's not how I see the yachts that I've been on here, because they're not created to showboat. Mrs. Gosnell and her late husband have shared irreplaceable memories traveling around the world. Barry Houghton appears to enjoy the creation of something truly special as much as the ownership itself. The Dubois Cup was exclusive, but also had a real charm about it. Typified by the winner, Mrs. Gosnell and the Timonier crew. Okay, we ready? Sorry. Catch! Ah, sorry. Not you, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get out before the dog, isn't yeah. it? Back from the Dubai Cup and back to a different world. I have four children and uh, I have a wife that doesn't work, otherwise it wouldn't, wouldn't be possible. I, but I still, uh, still work pretty hard and, and like working hard. So uh, time's out for the uh, Shetland pony. <laughs> Apparently, it's called Gammy. Ed, how many animals do you have? Um, hard to say, quite a lot. <laughs> it's busy at home, and it appears that the man so consumed by his job has changed the way he lives his life. I used to say it was a third, third, third. It was a third running the company, a third traveling and selling to a client, and a third designing the boats. Now I think it's probably uh, different because I have a family. It's a juggling act, really. That's good, Tom. It's, good, Tom. No, it's lovely. It's a lovely life. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> I can see why you go sailing on Firebrand. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Yeah, yes. never possible. <laughs> 
just a few minutes from home is the other love of his life. Expertly done. It was. <laughs> Born in 1964, Firebrand. How do you feel when you're on her? Totally at peace. I think that whenever you're on a boat that you like and you let the mooring go, you let go of everything, don't you? He may move in a world of glitz and glamour, but his enthusiasm for a simple day out on the water is lovely to see. If you have the courage to turn your mobile phone off, then you can really, really just relax. And I feel totally free. You've got a, a lovely feel for the boat, and we're always chatting about the performance when we've been on the boat. Is that something you think we still have in yacht designing, or is it much more about you know, computers and modelling? Mm, no, I, I, I'm sure that unless you have a direct contact with how a boat sails in, in your heart, then you can't design a decent boat. You have to feel it, understand it, eyeball it, experience its terrifying, powerful moments and its beautiful moments. Fireband, as far as I'm concerned, is as good a medium to refresh your memory as any. She epitomises, for me, what being on a sailing boat is all about. It's freedom, it's uh, complete happiness away from the day-to-day -day worries of life. It's your sanctuary. It's my potting shed. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Dubois has got momentum here, and it's much more than design flair that has created that. The real magic is having that sixth sense of listening to someone describe something intangible and interpreting it. And four years later, the thrill of the owner seeing something even he could not quite picture come to life. If you do that a few times with a multi-million euro super yacht, then word gets out. And Ed Dubois has been doing that with such passion, such enthusiasm for more than 30 years. Why are people pay me to do this? You know, it's such fun. It's almost a nerve to ask people to give you money to do what I love to do.